Thank you and hello everyone. My name is Justin Santini and I'm the founding president of Hong Kong Sacred Spaces Society. Today, I would like to talk to you about how in-person events can create meaningful experiences for those of you who use social media here in Hong Kong. About three years ago, I was scouting events for Sacred Spaces. Now, Sacred Spaces has a lot of on-site visits to many culturally relevant places here in Hong Kong, so we're always on the lookout for new places. This particular day, uh, I was in the Fan Ling area of Hong Kong with a knowledgeable friend. We had a chance to see many different sites, including Fun Yin Tsing Kun, the famous Taoist temple just opposite the MTR uh, station in Fan Ling. And we were there uh, looking at many important sites, and my friend looked at me and said, have you ever been to the grave of Yip Man? I said, the Yip Man, the famous Kung Fu master Yip Man. He said, sure, Yip Man's grave is in a small cemetery just behind the temple. Sure enough, after we walked down several overgrown paths and up a long flight of stairs, we found the grave of Sifu, or Master Yip Man. Now mind you, this is the Yip Man who trained some of Hong Kong's most important, most important Kung Fu masters in Hong Kong. Important and influential because many of those acolytes went on to star in and choreograph some of the most important Hong Kong action movies of all time. None would be more famous or influential than this guy, Bruce Lee, who I think you could argue, arguably say is the most famous person from Hong Kong who ever lived. So, sure enough, we cleared the grave, we uprighted a few jaw sticks, we paid our respects, and then we went on our way. As we were walking, I thought, how could such an important and influential man be buried in such a remote and nondescript location? Now, at, at Sacred Spaces, this kind of thing happens all the time. We visit places that are often virtually unknown or uh, inaccessible to the general public. When we find these places, usually people are, one, are in wondrous amazement, uh, both locals and non-locals alike. But you see, sometimes the most important places, the most interesting places, are hiding in plain sight, just requiring a little bit of effort and coordination to uncover. At Sacred Spaces, we do this by having a, a group of over 6,800 members. And we meet almost weekly to discuss and try to figure out where we would like to go next. We'd like to think of it as a network for Hong Kong culture. Now, networking is an expansive topic. Usually, we talk about it in relation to our careers and our business opportunities. But obviously, our personal networks are critical to our lives. My network led me to Fan Ling that day, and of course, eventually to find Yip Man's grave. So the question then remains, how can we engage with these networks? And is there something special about Hong Kong that we have to think about in relation to networks? In the beginning, there were traditional clubs. Now, traditional clubs, actually known as traditional gentlemen's clubs, emerged in Great Britain in the 19th century and quickly spread to other European societies. The first one here in Hong Kong was called the Hong Kong Club, formed in 1846. Now, membership to this club was exclusive. It was meant only for merchants and colonists who lived and worked here at the time. About 50 years later, the Hong Kong Club was joined by the Chinese Club, which, not surprisingly, was formed by businessmen in the Chinese and Eurasian communities. Now, both of these clubs were important and are important to their constituents. 
they gather like-minded people for a common purchase purpose. But sometimes, especially in the case of these two clubs, they were formed with an exclusive demographic. This in-group demographic often excluded others, not allowing them to expand their network beyond themselves, thus weakening their networks. Now, we're all familiar with this. We're all familiar with forming groups around professions, language, socioeconomic backgrounds. We form groups like this in what social scientists called in-group favoritism. In-group favoritism is a method by which we approve of other people only when we perceive them to be in our, in our network, in our group. It's interesting because studies have shown that it, all you have to do is gather a group of strangers together, label them group A and group B, and over time, inevitably, members of group A will start to feel differently about the people in group B and vice versa. Merely being in a group can trigger some of the negative effects of in-group favoritism. So how do, we, how do we counteract these effects? How do we deal with some of the club mentalities that we're familiar with. I propose that we use social media and, some, and one particular tool in social media called in-person events. In-person events are ways that we can gather people together and enjoy, gather people together and enjoy how we can all form a common interest. At Sacred Spaces, we have four important features of a successful event. The first one is a low barrier of entry for both members and organizers. Number two, events are conducted in a safe environment both on and offline. Number three, event, events are organized with diversity of people places and ideas as their main focus. And finally, and specifically to sacred spaces, our events are nonprofit. Everyone is welcome. You don't have to have special knowledge of Chinese culture, special knowledge of Chinese history. You don't even really have to speak English because there are many native speakers at all our events. Simply come to an event at the time that we post, and you can enjoy one of our activities. For us organizers, we say that a successful attempt, a successful event, is one in which people come for the entire time and stay. So that's a rather low barrier, actually, in terms of what a successful event is. A safe place. Now, safe place doesn't necessarily mean just that an event venue is safe. That's obvious. But event safety also means that people feel safe to share their views openly at a particular event. It also implies that people feel safe on and offline. One of the features that we try to do at Sacred Spaces is make sure that people don't receive Un unintended and not asked for communications, something that happens quite frequently in Hong Kong. This should be uh, carefully, carefully checked. Now, if you've created a safe environment and you have a low barrier of entry, chances are you've already gone quite a bit in getting a diverse event. For us, diversity is that people come from all walks of life and from all different backgrounds. People, places, and ideas. Ask and they will come is our credo at Sacred Spaces. Finally, because we are a nonprofit organization, Hong Kong Sacred Spaces has quite a bit of interest in the fact that we uh, operate as a nonprofit. We operate as a nonprofit because it creates a lot of uh, important, uh, we create a lot of credibility 
in our organization. I'd like to end by finishing my story about Yip Man. You see, I wasn't the only one that day that thought it strange that Sifu Yip was buried where he was. You see, just as my friend and I were leaving, we came across an interesting sight. We came across a Swedish Kung Fu club that just happened to be visiting that very day. Now imagine, about a dozen or so very tall, very fit Swedes in matching tracksuits, all with their lapel insignia on it, coming to Hong Kong not to buy watches or property, not to have suits made or anything like that. They came to Hong Kong because they wanted to they wanted to visit the place that they, with the topic of, that they loved most, which was Kung Fu. They were exasperated by the fact that there was no museum dedicated to traditional Chinese martial arts. They couldn't believe that there was virtually no official mention of Sifu Yip Man anywhere. So after parting ways, my friend who was with me, uh, a local guide, said in a rather lamenting tone, these Swedish guys came all the way here to visit, to visit Sifu. Most of my friends don't even know his real name. Sometimes our own culture is a mystery even to ourselves. That day I decided that every time we host an event in Fanlun, we would try to visit Sifu Yip. It's the least we can do. I encourage you all to find the things that you love and to use in-person events to gather with your neighbors. I'm sure that you'll be as encouraged with the results as we are at Hong Kong Sacred Spaces. Thank you, and hope to see you all at a Hong Kong Sacred Spaces soon.